ProGrade's new update has some game-changing features, but you're not going to be able to just download the app and everything's going to feel different. You're going to need to tweak some of the settings before you can play with these amazing new features. And in true Procreate fashion, while this app was made to support the Apple Pencil Pro, they found a way to adapt some of these changes for those of you who are just using a regular Apple Pencil. And I cannot believe that I am referring to the Apple Pencil as regular, but here we are. You know how annoying it can be to try and find the layer that you want to work on? Well, Procreate has redone the way that layer select works. To turn this on, we're going to go to the wrench icon, the preference tab and gesture controls and look for a tab that says layer select. Now, if you have the Apple Pencil Pro, there will be an option that you can toggle on Apple Pencil Squeeze. If you don't have that, uh, you can actually, you can choose a different setting here. I use this square plus Apple Pencil and uh, this is the square. It's the little square between your brush sliders. Now, whichever pencil that you have, when I activate this gesture, it's going to dim all of the other layers and the layer that I'm on will turn bright. Now, if I have a layer that, for example, all of these bottles, the white bottles are on top of a dark like pink texture, it'll give me the option to select between the two of those. So now I can grab these bubbles in the potion and I could quickly change the color of the potion bubbles or draw some new ones. In the day and a half that I have been using this, it has already saved me so much time and mental energy, letting me just stay in the flow of drawing. Now, digital artists will know the rage that comes with accidentally drawing on the wrong layer. And I tend to grip my Apple Pencil kind of tightly, so I did find myself accidentally switching layers, which can be a problem. Luckily, there's actually a setting in the iPad where you can adjust how hard you need to squeeze for this. So there's the Apple Pencil settings right here. And if you go to the Apple Pencil setting right here and then to the squeeze, from here, you can, trigger, you can change how sensitive, how hard you need to squeeze the pencil for it to activate. So maybe you don't need it as turned up as high as I do, and maybe I just need to chill out and loosen my grip. Now, layer select is not the only thing that you can assign squeeze to. So if we go back to these gesture controls, you can also um, use the eyedropper tool with squeeze. And y'all, this is so amazing. Look how fast and easy it is to grab a new color and just start drawing. This is, if I had a second button for squeeze, I would absolutely have it set for eyedrop. You can also assign quick shape to the squeeze. So if I come in here, and I draw a really rough circle and then I squeeze my pencil, it's gonna open up the options to edit it. So I can edit this, I can choose this to be an ellipse or a perfect circle. I can grab the nodes and adjust my shape. Pretty handy. I can also assign this to quick menu. And now it will bring up my, my quick menu, which you can assign all of these buttons to specific tools that you like to use a lot. Now, if you do not have anything assigned to Apple Pencil Squeeze in here, in, in these shortcuts, the squeeze is going to be automatically assigned by whatever you have set in your Apple Pencil settings. So the tool palette will also bring up the quick menu. The switch between the current tool and eraser and current tool and last use will switch between your paintbrush, eraser, whatever you used last. But these two are pretty interesting. So if I have it set to show color palette, that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna pull the color palette up. And if I have it set to show ink attributes, it's gonna open up the brush panel. So there's a lot of options and depending on what's most important to you, you can use it. Now, all of the settings inside of here, you can use with just the other Apple Pencil, like just the regular Apple Pencil. Um, just the squeeze is a lot faster and easier to use than most of these other settings. It's easy to brush off the Liquify tool as kind of gimmicky, but it's actually a crazy underrated tool for artists and not many people seem to know how to take advantage of this. Now, there's some new Apple Pencil Pro updates, but even if you have the regular Apple Pencil, you can still use the most valuable parts of this tool. So we can actually apply Liquify to multiple layers at the same time. So I'm gonna grab, I have like three different layers uh, that her hair is on, and I'm gonna grab all three of those, go to the magic wand icon and into Liquify. And there's these little twirl buttons here. And with the new Apple Pencil Pro, you can actually come in here and you can twist your pencil in different directions to create more of a swirly kind of effect. And, you know, I, I could in theory use this to create, you know, tighter curls in her hair. But I don't really feel like this is where the real power in this tool lies. 
let's say I've got my sketch of my potions here, but I decide I'm gonna add a label right here. And now the mushroom and the label, they're crossing over in a weird way that I don't like. Well, I can go to the liquify tool and there's an option here called push. And with this, I can just nudge the mushroom out of the way and I don't have to redraw it. Uh, likewise, if I look at these snowdrops here, I could use the pinch button to make the snowdrop smaller, or I could use the expand to make the top of it larger and rounder. So you don't have to have the Apple Pencil Pro for this. You can use this feature with just the regular Apple Pencil. There's lots of amazing hidden features like this in Procreate. And if you'd like to learn more, you may wanna check out my Procreate for Beginners class where you learn everything that you can do in Procreate through a series of drawing projects. So you'll do, learn everything hands-on. And the good news is you don't have to have any drawing experience. There's a link in the description below to learn more. But back to the update, the biggest game changer that Procreate's made are the roll to the new brushes. So for example, I've got this brush that's hovering here. And if I wanna place this star, but in different positions, I can just literally rotate my brush. Or let's say that I wanna use this style of star, I'm gonna rotate my brush and it's gonna give me a different size of star to place in here. Now, here's the catch though. You can't just open the app and it's gonna magically work on all of your brushes. You're gonna need to make sure that you have a few settings turned on. Now, first, obviously you need to have an Apple Pencil Pro and a compatible iPad. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that the app Procreate is updated to the latest version and you'll wanna make sure that you're on the latest software. Like, even if you literally pulled a new iPad out of the box today, you may still need to update your software. At least that's what happened to me, and I was like, what the heck, why doesn't anything work for me? It was the software, I needed to update the software. Once you've got all those bases covered, you're gonna come into Procreate, you're gonna go to the wrench icon, the preference tab, and you need to make sure that you toggle the brush cursor on. And underneath that, we can tap on there and there'll be the advanced cursor settings. We wanna make sure that you are, um, at least the hover is on because hover is gonna be really crucial to all of these features. Um, I like to see my cursor when I'm painting as well, so I use show both. Now I am going to use the high contrast outline and that's because it creates this black outline around my cursor and that's gonna make it easier for you to see. You, however, might want to have active color. So for example, if I have a really pale pink on here and I hold it up to her cheek, at least it, to my eyes, I don't know how it looks on camera, but this looks really close to her skin color, so I know I need to go darker with this for it to actually show up. Now the caveat here is, let's say I'm using a white color, I can see that great on her skin, but as soon as I get to the moon, uh, the cursor is there, but I, I really can't see it. So I have to, so that's, that's why I like having the high contrast because it just, it shows the, uh, it shows that black outline. Now I've created a brush set for you for free that you can download in the description below, but I wanna walk you through where these settings are in the brush studio so that you can apply them to any brush that you wanna use. So if we tap into the brush studio, I wanna go over the shape tab first. So these are all of your brush settings. This is where the most important, most valuable setting is going to be. And that's gonna be in these input styles right here. Now there's three settings in here, touch only, uh, azimuth. So what the heck is azimuth? So it's just a fancy word for meaning that the tilt of your brush is going to affect your stroke. Um, and this is something that you can actually use with your regular Apple Pencil. Um, but we're gonna turn on barrel roll and I'm gonna show you what this does. So I can use my brush straight up and down to create really thin hair strokes like this, right? But I can also take my brush on the flat side, like so, to cover wide swaths of color and then rotate it on its thin edge like that. And I do that by rotating the brush. What's really cool about this is that I don't have to lift up my pencil to do this either. Let's try redrawing her eyebrow. So I'm gonna start with my brush on the tall side to create the wideness, and then as it, her eye narrows where the eyebrow would narrow, I just twist my brush. And I can even add a thin dash right there. Now, what about this relative to stroke setting? What does that do? Well, this setting is gonna come up in basically every roll brush setting that you can set up. I made this fun rainbow roll brush that's gonna demonstrate what this does pretty well. So I'm gonna go into the color dynamics and 
if I scroll to the bottom, there's all these fun color choices that you can affect with your twisting of the pencil. So I've got hue turned on. So let's see what this does. I've selected a purple and if I roll my brush, you can see that it changes colors. And one thing I've noticed here is when I started this stroke, it was purple. But when I started this one, it was kind of like an orange green. But what if I want this to always start with purple? That's where the relative to stroke setting is going to come in handy. But I don't see that option here. Well, the tricky thing is sometimes you have to tap into the number and then there's this little roll icon and that's where you're going to see some of these other settings. So that's the relative to stroke setting hidden in there. For example, you know, it's displayed very clearly here, but in the scatter, boom, that's where you would turn on barrel roll and choose whether you want it to be relative to stroke or not. Okay, but let's see this in action. So now, no matter where, what direction, every brush stroke that I start is starting with purple. Relative to stroke means that the barrel roll changes will happen when you start drawing and not before. Let's take a look back at our hairbrush. If I were to turn on the barrel roll settings with my hairbrush, no matter how much I twist my brush, it's not going to let me start with the flat side. It's forcing me to start with the upper side. Now, as soon as I start drawing, I can make it go fat and wide, but it's forcing me to start with that thin stroke. There's also some fun settings in the Apple Pencil tab here. I wanna go over a couple of scenarios where this can be useful and some workarounds for areas you might get stuck on. So if I scroll down, you'll see that there's the barrel roll settings here, and I've got this cranked up for size to the max. So when I twist my brush, I can adjust the size of this star. Cool, cool. I could also use this with opacity. Now my brush is gonna be lighter or darker depending on the twist of my pencil. Now this is handy, but what if I also want to change the direction that this star tilts in when I twirl my brush? So I can do that by going to the shape section because I am changing the shape of my brush and I can turn on the barrel roll there. Okay, now when I rotate the star to the right, the opacity is full, but now it, anytime I wanna rotate the brush to the right, it, it's going to like a very low opacity. This is annoying. I want to play with size and opacity while at the same time being able to rotate the shape of my brush. All right, let's give it a try with this brush here. So this brush, when I twist it, the star twirls. And if while hovering my brush, I pinch my two other fingers, then I can control the size of this brush. I can also take one finger and this will allow me to control the opacity of this star. To do this, I've actually used a completely different setting. In the settings of this brush, I have only turned on the shape barrel roll. In Apple Pencil, I don't have any barrel roll set. Instead, I've gone to the wrench icon, the preference tab, gesture controls, and hover, and I've made sure to turn this touch toggle on. Now this means I can actually use this two finger squeeze and one finger opacity drag with any brush. So if I grab my hairbrush up here, so once I'm hovering, I'm gonna pinch two fingers, and look, I can make my brush bigger or smaller by pinching my fingers. Now there's a couple of ways to cause irreversible damage in Procreate, like permanently lose all of your artwork damage. And to make sure that you know how to avoid the worst Procreate mistakes that I see artists make, check out this video next.